Hey guys, welcome back to Justin Reed's Romance. I'm Justin, and today I have some mafia recommendations for you to prepare for the mafia readathon that's happening in the first weekend of June. It's going to be a readathon, just a weekend readathon from the 4th through the 6th, and we'll have a live show. There will be prizes. There will be some great prizes donated by authors, so be sure you attend that live show and submit your bingo board to Jen. She has all those links. I will include them down in the description box below. It's no secret that in 2020, I become obsessed with mafia romance after completely calling myself out and saying that I did not like the trope in romance at all Jen wanted to prove me wrong gave me some books to try out I found out that there were books out there that I really loved in mafia romance and I've discovered some really 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 great books and authors and they've gone to my top favorite list like I'm not even gonna lie I'm very surprised I'm also gonna be linking Jen's channel and social as well as the co-hosts Jess from Peace Love Books Tori from Novel life and tiffany from neverland pixie on instagram i'll link all of their channels down below they've already done video recommendations for mafia i will definitely include them in fact i've had a change of tbr and i'll talk about that later but before we do that recommendation time recommendation time before we get started on my tbr for this readathon i know i have way too many books on it for a weekend readathon <laughs> i wanted to go over some recommendations some mafia recommendations that i have read and loved and i wanted to let you guys know what books you could check out to fit your prompts. I was actually having a conversation with Crystal this morning about who would I consider my favorite mafia romance writer. And there are definitely two that stand out on the list and they're both recent uh, reads for me. And I just completely fell in love with these series. The first one I'm going to talk about is Serena Ackroyd's Five Point Mob series or affectionately known as the Filthy Fecker series. This is um, Irish Mob. The first book, Filthy, this is such a great romance. It's so hot. And one of the things that I really love about um, Serena Ackroyd's and the next author that I'm going to talk about is that they're focused on family. I really love when there is a good family dynamic that is centralized within a mafia series because I think that it's really important in such a brutal world. It's really nice to see those calmer moments, at least in my opinion, that's what I look in particular for mafia romances. It's the brutality that needs to be, you know, evened out with some very wholesome moments and I think that they're definitely in here. But don't let it fool you. This series is very aptly named. This book is filthy. The sex scenes are so spicy. They're so hot. I absolutely loved it. The hero in Filthy Finn O'Grady, he actually blackmails the heroine Aoife into basically making kind of like a sex arrangement in order to gain the property that her mother's tea shop slash cafe was in. They wanted to demolish basically the whole block that that street was on. Aoife was the last holdout because she didn't want to destroy her mom's property. She did not want to give in. But once it was made very clear Finn was the accountant for the Five Points mob, she knew she had no choice. And there were some intense sexual chemistry when Finn made his offer and she did agree to it. They had a amazing one night stand. But the thing is, after Finn slept with her, finding out that she's a virgin, he's like, I want to marry this girl. That's what I really love about the series is that all the heroes are really gone for the heroines. They really love and cherish the heroines and I just, it just makes me swoon. It makes me swoon. So this series is absolutely amazing. My next recommendation is Sophie Lark. So I read two series by Sophie Lark and um, you'll see her on my TBR again, but uh, one of my favorites is Stolen Air and this counts for a couple of the prompts and it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Also captor captive romance, tattooed hero. It covers a lot of the prompts, just yes. Oh my God, amazing. What's also interesting is that the hero is actually part of the Polish mafia and he wasn't even born into it. He kind of got like adopted into it and he has sort of like a tragic backstory. The first chapter just like completely broke my heart. And the heroine Nessa is a ballerina. Her family is, I think her family's part of the Irish mob because the first book in the series, Brutal Prince, um, it was an arranged marriage to situation between the Italian and Irish mobs of Chicago. Nessa is the youngest daughter of the Griffins. She has no interest in mafia at all. And that's another thing that I really love about Sophie Lark. She creates such strong family bonds and I love it. The kids aren't expected to become mafia. They're not expected to enter into arranged marriages. It's just a very different situation. And I thought that that was so very unique, but Nessa does get roped into the mafia anyway, because Mikolaj does kidnap Nessa 
as retaliation for something that happened in the first book. It is absolutely amazing. They're one of my favorite couples. I just love them and I'm not going to talk about every single book by Sophia Lark but I did have to mention that Broken Vow is my favorite of the series. It's book five and it blew me away. This is an opposites attract, grumpy sunshine pairing and I absolutely love it. And the hero is not even part of the mafia at all. It was just amazing. I just wanted to mention that really quick. The spinoff series from the Brutal Birthright is The Kingmakers. The first book being The Heir and the second book is The Rebel. The third book is coming out very, very soon. We're going to be doing a live show with Sophie Lark. But The Heir is kind of like a new adult mafia romance. These are the kids of the Brutal Birthright series and they are attending a college called The Kingmakers, which is exclusive to kids of the mafia. It's a brutal world. They are literally training to be the next generation of mafios. So they're going to be the heirs, the accountants, the enforcers, the spies, and it is a crazy world. Very, very interesting. And this is a friends to lovers. They're literally best friends. And they go to this college and figure out that they have some feelings for each other. And it's just beautiful. It's amazing. She writes some unique stories. So Sophie Lark and Serena Ackroyd, definitely my top favorite mafia romance authors. Love them. Next is Ruthless Creatures by J.T. Gessinger. This is the first book in her new series, Queens and Monsters. And this fits for the Ratva prompt, the Russian mafia. I really love this as well because it's a pairing between the hero who is in the Russian mob and the heroine who is completely not involved in the mafia at all. He actually moves in and becomes her neighbor. There are some weird interactions. She has been mourning the loss of her fiance. He disappeared on her rehearsal dinner the day before they were supposed to get married. He disappeared without a trace and he's officially declared dead. And then the stranger shows up in the house next door. And there's some very hot, sexy chemistry, some secrets going around. It's just really good time. I think that this is also a very unique mafia series. I cannot wait for the second book to come out. I'm like dying for it. Then of course, what would a mafia video be without Cora Riley? I'm gonna go ahead and suggest the Kimura Chronicles because even though I did pretty much enjoy the Born and Blood series, Cora Riley really shines with the first three books in the Kimura Chronicles. Twisted loyalties, twisted emotions, twisted pride. You cannot go wrong with any of these at all. The third book in the series, Twisted Pride, is specifically a captor captive romance. It's bonkers though. Ramo Falcone, you have to be prepared for him. Another thing that sets this apart, even though they are Italian mafia, they are living in Las Vegas. So this is like such a different setting because a lot of the Italian and Irish mafia romances are kind of set on like the East Coast in Chicago or New York or something like that. And so this is in Vegas. So there's lots of like cage fighting going around and it's just so cool. It's so cool. I cannot recommend Twisted Motions enough. It's one of my favorites that Cora Riley has ever written and I just absolutely love it. Nino Falcone is just my love, my love. Then I'm bringing back this book that I haven't read in the longest time, but The Professional by Cressley Cole. And the heroine is actually the long lost daughter of one of like the big time bosses in Russia. And this guy comes to get her. She's living like her small town life. I want to say it's in Kansas because I think that there's like a cornfield scene? Don't quote me. It's somewhere else. Just don't quote me. But let me tell you, this book is hot and heavy. There are some definite BASM elements in this one and it's just a wild ride. It's just a wild ride. If you're looking for something a little bit more tame, I would recommend Lev by Belle Aurora. And this was one of the sweetest mafia romances that I've read. So the heroine is actually caught in his club trying to pickpocket a dude, trying to steal a wallet. And so Lev knows that she's doing this because she's hungry and she's homeless and she's struggling and he actually gives her a place to stay. He, he basically gives her an ultimatum. I can turn you into the cops or you have got to agree to come to my house tonight. And like, it's crazy. Why would you accept help from a stranger? You don't know what he wants from you. But Lev is like such a gentle soul and I love this book so much. It was just so different and I appreciated that. So if you're trying to ease yourself into Mafia, I would definitely suggest Lev. Now, one of the first Mafia books that I ever read and I actually enjoyed, I was like, huh, this one's not quite so bad. It's Crow by A. Zavarelli. I read the Boston Underworld series quite a few years ago and I really enjoyed it. This is definitely more brutal world. The Irish mafia, in most mafia books, the Irish are kind of a little bit 
more unhinged and crazy and a little bit more brutal than the rest of them. And the Boston Underworld definitely fits that mold. So the heroine is actually searching for her friend who has been missing. She decides to take matters into her own hands because the cops aren't really doing anything. She decides to go undercover into this strip club. She's going to pose as a stripper because she needs to infiltrate them and find out what's going on because she knows that the Irish mob in Boston have greased the hands of police and she's like, nobody's going to do anything so I have to take it into my own hands. That's where she meets the hero. He runs this club, he is part of the Irish mob and he's totally brutal but she's really badass. I just love it. One of my favorites is Reaper though. It's kind of a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I would consider Reaper a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's just beautiful. It's like the strong silent hero who has a traumatic past and like the heroine just has to like coax that emotion out of him and it's just it's just so good. I enjoyed it a lot. One last recommendation would be Beast by Misha Stone. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and there's no like specific mob affiliation mentioned but the story functions. The way that the, the hero operates, he definitely operates with mob mentality. So I would totally count it for a mafia romance. The heroine basically trades places with her dad whenever her dad runs up debt and the hero wants to collect that debt and she offers herself up and they make kind of a sex pact and she is his to do with whatever he pleases. So it is also a wild ride. Lots of BDSM elements with this one too. And now for my TBR for the Weekend Redefine. I have way too many books. I will not get close to reading all of these books. I will try to read as many as I can because I honestly, I didn't want to kick out anyone. I did not want to take off one of these books from my list. So I'm going to try my hardest, even though not a lot of them have audio. I think I have audio for one of them. So that doesn't really help me that much. The first book on my TBR is actually the one that I recently added because of Tori. If you go check out her video, she mentions this mafia romance that's an MMF romance. It's called Corrado by Bethany Chris. And I actually had Bethany Chris on my list of like potentials. I grabbed like 16 books off of Amazon to look and see which ones I wanted to include on my TBR. So I was going to do Captivated, but as soon as I heard Tori talk about this duet, Corrado and Alessio, and it was an MMF romance, mafia romance, that's almost unheard of. And I was like, I have to read this one. So Corrado is the first book on my TBR. I hope it's amazing. I hope it's amazing. The second book on my list is Ruthless Stranger by Maggie Cole. This was recommended by Jen from the Book Refuge. She recently read this one, really loved it. And it has a lot of like different elements, unique elements that I'm very interested in. The hero and the heroine are older. I think the hero is in his mid forties and they meet in Vegas. They kind of have a one night stand. Then they run into each other again. So I'm very interested in this one. From what Jen says, it's really good. And that's the one that I have on audio. Next is Ivan by Sophie Lark. This is the first book in her Underworld series. And it's a captor captive romance. From the blurb, it sounds like the heroine tries to poison the hero by sneaking into his room and injecting him with poison. So. I'm intrigued. I want to know what's going on behind the scenes with this one. Next is Dark Mafia Prince by Anika Martin. I think this one is the oldest book that I have on my Kindle to do with Mafia. And it's really not been that long since I joined BookTube. I heard a lot of people talk about Dark Mafia Prince. I immediately purchased it and then I never ended up by reading it. So now's the time. Now's the time for me to read it. I don't know very much about this because I didn't want to. I just heard that everybody really liked it. And when it comes to books that everybody just kind of recommends, I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to read it. I don't need to read the blurb and stuff like that. So I'm going to stick by that and not read the blurb for this one. I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. <laughs> then of course, I have got to read Filthy Hot by Serena Ackroyd. I'm actually waiting because this book releases on May 27th and I'm actually waiting to read it so that I can include it on this readathon so I can have like a guaranteed, like I'd be so surprised if this book isn't a five star. And I hope I'm not jinxing myself by saying that. <laughs> but the O'Donnelly men have not let me down yet. So I'm pretty confident in them. Then I have Sorted by Nikki Sloan. This was another book that Jen kind of put on my radar and I was thinking about reading it, never really picked it up, but now is also the time that I'm just like, I have got to read this one and it's supposed to be a captor captive romance and I'm ready for the intensity. I'm just ready for it. I love this cover too. Like this cover's 
very hot. And then finally, I have The Maddest Obsession by Danielle Laurie. And I will say I did not really enjoy The Sweetest Oblivion, but I've heard better things about books two and book three. So I'm really crossing my fingers that The Maddest Oblivion is going to give me the things that I was really looking for and didn't find in The Sweetest Oblivion. Did I say The Maddest Oblivion? Is that what it's called? The Maddest Obsession, not Oblivion. But these characters were definitely circling each other in the first book, so I'm excited to figure out what's going on with this like FBI agent. Like what's, what's gonna happen with him and Gianna? I'm definitely here for it because it sounds a little bit messy. All right, that's it for my TBR. I will be posting my official TBR on Instagram. All right, that's it for my TBR. That is it for my recommendations. If you need more recommendations, please check out the videos that I've linked down below. I'm so excited. Don't forget to tag us in your posts during the readathon when you post your reading updates and your bingo boards on Instagram. I'm so excited and I can't wait for the live show. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe to get notified on any future videos that I do. Thank you so much for watching and remember, life's better with a little HEA. Bye guys. Thank you.